Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to calculate the second momentum variant of a compound section. Someone asked me this in the comment section of one of my videos and I thought it would be a good idea to show you how to do it because it's fairly straightforward and if you're you know, designing plate girders or if you're doing an example like this where you're trying to support a very thick wall but you don't want to specify two beams for whatever reason this is how you can calculate the second moment of area which controls your deflection i'll also show you just how much adding a plate on top can affect the second moment of area and it can often be neglected or if you're in a pinch and you've designed your beam incorrectly or you design your beam where deflection is a bit too high adding a plate can can significantly reduce the amount of deflection so it's definitely something to have in your back pocket if something goes wrong so this is a very simple spreadsheet which I made on how to design a steel beam. If you want help on learning how to design a steel beam, I've got a separate video for that. So for this example, the beam which we're designing is supporting a three meter length or trib of floor. The floor is quite lightweight, it's only one kinesis per meter squared, and it's supporting a very thick wall, and it's also got some live load on it. So here I'm trying to pick out a suitable beam, and what I go for is a 254 UB, and what you can see here is that it's failing in deflection. Your initial reaction might just be to increase the beam weight or increase the beam size. However, because the wall is actually a lot wider than the beam flange, the beam flange only being 146 millimeters, and the wall could be say 300 mil, we're gonna to need to put a steel plate on top anyway to make sure that the wall can actually sit on the beam. So we can use the plate to our advantage by increasing the neutral axis which controls the deflection so i'm going to run through how you do this by hand if you remember from university you were probably taught this but if you need a refresher the equations are all in the red book which i highly recommend everyone getting okay so this is the steel beam which we've got the dimensions for the flanges the web they're all from the blue book so what i'm going to do is to add a 275 mil wide plate and it's going to be 10 mil thick. I'm going to label the four different sections A to D. For the first part, there are two things that we want to calculate. And that's the area, which is A, and YI, which is the distance from the centroid of the section to the top of the compound section. So here I'm just going to be going through the motion of calculating the area and calculating YI for every section. So the distance from the center of the section to the top of the compound section is the thickness of the plate over two, so five millimeters. We next want to multiply the area by yi. So now you basically repeat the same process for every section. The only difference is calculating yi. So in the case of this section B, it's half the flange or the plate thickness, so 8.6 over two plus the flange above it, or the plate above it, which is 10 mil. I'll leave the video running at this speed, but if you want to click forward, feel free to go ahead. Okay, so now that you've calculated each individual section, now you can sum all the areas and you can sum all the A times YI values. Then to calculate the new neutral axis position from the top of the section, you divide one by the other. So you're dividing A times YI over A. So what I'm showing you now is the position of the neutral axis if the plate didn't exist. But now that we've added the plate, the neutral axis shifts upwards. 
So in this instance, the neutral axis now of the compound section is 82 millimeters from the top of the compound section. Okay, so this is the second part of the equation, which is probably in your red book. And I forgot to mention that this theory or theorem is called the parallel axis theorem. So this second part of the equation is the area multiplied by, in brackets, the depth of the neutral axis minus the section neutral axis, all squared, plus the second moment area as a rectangular section of that section. That all might have sounded a little bit confusing, but if you follow the numbers, it will make sense. So here we're just basically plugging in all the numbers that we calculated from the previous section. And I'm gonna split the results up and I'll add them together later. And you'll see why, it's because um, I actually created a spreadsheet for this and it's just easier if you do it separately. So for each individual section, you're just plugging in the numbers and outputting the result. Repeat this process for all four little sections. We're then at the end going to sum up all the values and then we're gonna add them together. So up until this point, I've been working in millimeters. So second moment area, millimeters to four. And because I want to compare them to the values in the steel book, I'm gonna convert it to centimeters to the four. So moving back to spreadsheets, I created the exact calculation which we just did to calculate the second moment of area. And I made this a long time ago because I was on a project which had a lot of these added plates on beams. So it just, made the process um, a little bit quicker for me. So now that we've got a new second moment of area, we can plug this new value into the spreadsheet. And now you can see that all the deflection checks pass. So you can see just how big a difference it can make. Now it's always nice to double check or verify your own hand calculations. So there's a, actually a module within TED software which shows you how to do this. Um, so you, I just plugged in the values or plugged in the section size, plugged in the width of my plate. And as you can see, the second moment of area of the compound section is exactly the same as what I had calculated. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you have, please remember to like and subscribe and I'll catch you on the next video. Cheers.